This is MathHeals.com. If you want to go here to find more links to YouTube math videos. And let's take a look at multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And um, let's take a look at our first problem. Maybe. Where's the tablet at? There we go. So we got um, x plus 5 over 18x times 9x to the third over x squared minus 25. And this is multiplying rational expressions. Okay, now our first step is to factor everything. Now x plus 5 can't do anything with, 9x to the third can't do anything with, 18x can't do anything with, but x squared minus 25, that's the difference of two squares. <coughs> get that a little bit better. So the difference of two squares. Well let me um let me come down here and do it kind of down below. So you see, see the steps. We got x squared minus twenty five. We try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. And you ask yourself what times itself gives you the x squared and that'd be x. And you ask yourself what times itself gives you the twenty five and that'd be five. Difference two squares says we take what's inside the first set of parentheses, we add what's in our last, and we take what's inside our first and we subtract what's in our last. So it factors that way. <coughs> so this becomes x plus 5 over 18x times 9x to the third over x plus 5, x minus 5. Step two, cancel if possible. And really your only rule on this is that they are the same. And one is on top and one is on the bottom. So looking at this, here I have an x plus 5 and here I have an x plus 5. They're the same. One's on top, one's on the bottom. Now we can cancel a little bit more with this. Um, let me write it down again and then we'll do some more canceling. has nothing to do with our factoring. has more to do with what we've already seen in past, uh, past material. Now here I got 9 and 18. These are both divisible by 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 18 divided by 9 is 2. So this gives us uh, 1 over 2x times x to the third over x minus 5. And um, here we have an x and here we have an x to the third. That x is like x to the first power. If I were to put an exponent here, it would be the first power. Let me write everything else down. There we go. Okay. If you have x to a power over x to a power, remember you subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. So 3 minus 1 gives you 2. And we'll have x to the second power where our larger exponent was, which was on top. And um, let, me, um, let me erase this. This is like right in the middle of where I want. Well, I, I'll put it down below that. Okay, step three. Multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. So after we've done our simplifying, 
multiply your numerators and your denominators. 1 times x squared gives us x squared. And when I say multiply, you actually just put them next to each other. The they don't, Books don't usually multiply those back through. They leave them in that form. And that would be your answer. <coughs> Let's take a look at this problem. Got 4x plus 16 over x squared minus 3x minus 28 times 2x over 32. Now remember step one. Step one is to factor everything. Well, the top part here, 4x plus 16, that's the GCF. x squared minus 3x minus 28, that's PSD. x squared, x, no x, and no number in front of the x squared. These are just numbers. Well, let me do them over here. Um, actually, I can do the 4 right here. Factor a 4 out, and that gives us x plus 4. Now, the PSD method. The x squared minus 3x minus 28. Um, PSD, we take the number at the end, which is 28. We ignore signs, so it would be a positive 28. And we're going to write down all products give us 28. we got 1 times 28, 2 times 14, 4 times 7. We'll add those. 1 plus 28 is 29, 2 plus 14 is 16, 4 plus 7 is 11. Subtract them. 28 minus 1 is 27, 14 minus 2 is 12, 7 minus 4 is 3. Now the number we're looking for is the number in our middle term, which is 3, which is right here. So we're going to use 4 and 7. Now our larger number in our P column that we're going to use is the 7 will always be the same sign as the middle term which is negative. Now um, we circled uh, a number in a difference column, D for different signs, so if this is negative this has to be positive. Okay, step 2, cancel. Well, here's an x plus 4, here's an x plus 4. Those are going to cancel. Let me write down what I have left. 4 over x minus 7 uh, times 2x over 32. Again, our only guideline is one's on top, one's on the bottom. They don't have to be in the same fraction. 4 and 32, both divisible by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 32 divided by 4 is 8. And we got 1 over x minus 7 times 2x over 8. And we can do a little bit more simplifying. 2 and 8, both divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So then that gives us 1 over x minus 7 times x over 4. Um, nothing left to um, cancel, so step three, multiply the top parts together, one times x, and the bottom parts, so we've got four times x minus seven. And that'd be our answer. And let me grab a drink here. There we go. Let's look at the next problem. We have 10x minus 2 over x squared minus 9 times x squared plus 2x minus 3 over 5x squared minus 6x plus 1. Step 1 is factor everything. Well, this is GCF. This is dots. Two terms of minus two, difference two squares. This is PSD. X squared X, no X, no number in front of our X squared. And this is key number. Um, let me write them down here and then I'll, I'll show all the steps over here. I don't usually show the steps in class because we've already learned factoring. Um, 
but in case you need to see them, then I'll put them over there. And um, what is this factor as? 5x, x, 1, 1, and minus, minus. Okay, let me show the steps. Of course, GCF I think is pretty obvious, but x squared minus 9. Difference of two squares. You try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. You ask yourself what time the self gives you the x squared, and that's x. And what time the self gives you the 9, and that's 3. Different two squares says you take what's inside your first set of parentheses, you add what's in your last, and you take what's in your side your first, and you subtract what's in your last. So that's where we get the x plus 3, x minus 3. Now the x squared plus 2x minus 3. PSD. So we take the number at the end, the 3, ignoring signs, and we're going to come up with our three columns. Our product column, sum column, difference column. We write down all products, give us 3. Well, that's only 1 times 3. Add those, 1 plus 3 is 4, subtract them, 3 minus 1 is 2. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 2, which is right here, so I'm going to use 3 and 1. Now our larger number in the P column, which is 3, will always be the same size as the middle term, which is positive. The number I circled in the difference column, D for different signs, so if this one's positive, this one has to be negative. And that's where I get the X plus 3, X minus 1. Now 5x squared minus 6x plus 1. This is the key number. And um, <coughs> with the key number, we take the number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So it would be 5 times 1, which gives us 5. And we come up with our three columns. Uh, write down all products give us 5. Well, 1 times 5 is it. Add them. 1 plus 5 is 6. Subtract them. 5 minus 1 is 4. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 6. So we're going to use 1 and 5. And we rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. Our large number to P column, which is 5, is going to be the same sign as the middle term, always. So that's negative 5x. The number of circles in the S column, S for same sign, so if the 5 is negative, then the 1 will be negative. Well, we use factoring by grouping. These have a 5x in common. These mean x minus 1. These have nothing in common, but my first term is negative, so I'll factor out a negative 1, and that gives us x minus 1. So then we've got x minus 1 times 5x minus 1, and um, that's where I get this at. Step 2, cancel if possible. 5x minus 1 there cancels that 5x minus 1 there. The x plus 3 here cancels that x plus 3. The x minus 1 here cancels that x minus 1. And what do we have left? We have a 2 on top, and down below we have an x minus 3. And um, there's nothing left besides that, so that's actually our answer. We don't need to multiply anything together at that point. Let's take a look at this one. We got uh, x plus 6 times x plus 7 over x squared minus 4x minus 60. Well, if you're going to add fractions, if you're going to subtract fractions, if you're going to multiply fractions, if you're going to divide fractions, no matter what it is, they both should be fractions. So here we got multiplication. I want to rewrite this in fraction form, so I'll put it over 1. That's just a general idea. Anytime you're working with fractions, if you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, they both should be fractions. Well, step 1. We want to factor everything. x plus 6, x plus 7, and 1 can't do anything with, but this one is the PSD method. And uh, let's see, x plus 6 over 1, 1 x plus 7 over x, um, I may have to do this one just for myself. I'm not sure if I can see it. 6 and 10. There it is. Okay, so x minus 10 and x plus 6. Now let me do it over here to show the steps. 
Okay, so we got x squared minus 4x minus 60. And we're going to use the PST method because it's x squared, x, no x, no number in front of your x squared. So we take our number at the end, the 60, and we'll come up with our three columns. Write down our products, give us 60, 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10. Add them. 1 plus 60 is 61, 2 plus 30 is 32, 2, 3 plus 20 is 23, 19, 17, 16. Subtract them. 60 minus 1 is 59, 30 minus 2 is 28, 17, 11, um, 7, and 4. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 4, which is here. So we use 6 and 10. Now our larger number, which is the 10, is always going to be the same size as the middle term, which is negative. The number I circled is in difference column, D for different signs. So if this one's negative, that one's positive. And that's how we got that. Step 2, cancel if possible. Well, here's next plus 6, and here's next plus 6. Those cancel. And we're left with 1 over 1, that just disappears. So we're left with x plus 7 over x minus 10. And there's nothing left to cancel or do anything, so that's our answer. Let me start a new page. And let's look at division. Number 5. So we've got x squared minus 1 over 20x squared divided by x squared minus 21x plus 20 over 5x. And um, just really not enough room here because I'm going to need to factor but I can't show the steps if I... Oh well, let me put it over here. Dividing rational expressions. Step one. Rewrite as multiplication by flipping the fraction following the division symbol. Well, what does that mean? Well, we got x squared minus 1 over 20x squared, and we're going to rewrite as multiplication. Instead of division, we're going to have multiplication by flipping the fraction following it, taking a reciprocal of it. So this would be 5x over x squared minus 21x plus 20. And now it's a multiplication, so it's the same steps we, we've already seen. Uh, step two is f uh, to um, factor everything. Well, x squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares. These are nothing. This is uh, PSD. I won't show the steps on this one. Um, but uh, this is x plus 1 times x minus 1 over 20x squared times 5x and this one factors as um, x minus 20 times x plus 1 okay I'm lying minus there it goes okay so everything's factored step 3 cancel if possible Remember what I said about canceling. They have to be the same, and one's on top, one's on the bottom. Well, here's an x minus 1, and here's an x minus 1. So those are going to cancel. So I got x plus 1 over 20x squared times 5x over x minus 20. Well, the 20 and the 5 are both divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So this becomes x plus 1 
over 4x squared times um, x over x minus 20. Well, here I have an x squared, and here I have x, and if I were to put a power there, it'd be like the, uh, be the first power. So we got x plus 1, 4 times x minus 20. Now, if we have x to a power over x to a power, and it doesn't matter that they're in different fractions, still the same, same rule applies, you subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. So 2 minus 1 gives us 1, and we'll have x to the first power where our larger exponent was, which is downstairs. Um, there's nothing left to cancel. I can't cancel the x's here because this is a plus. So step 4 is multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. And oh, 1 goes here, by the way. So multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. So x plus 1 times 1 is x plus 1. And then I got 4x times x minus 20. And that's our answer. <coughs> Just double check myself. My stepson was um. I heard him jiggling the door and so forth. I didn't know if he needed it in or not. Um, I think he's lost his key. So I wasn't really focusing when I was doing that. And it uh, looks okay. Okay. Let's look at another one of those. So we've got 10x squared plus 26x minus 12 over 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 divided by x plus 3 squared over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now our first step is to rewrite multiplication. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got 10x squared plus 26x minus 12 over 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 times x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x plus 3 squared. Again, we take the reciprocal of the fraction following the division symbol. Now to factor everything. Step 2. Well, this is GCF up here. This is key number down here. We have x squared, x, no x, and there's a number in front of her x squared. Top part here, they're all both divi all divisible by 2. And this one's PSD. x squared, x, no x, no number in front of her x squared. So let me factor a 2 out of this, and that gives us 5x squared plus 13x minus 6. And this part factors that way. This part factors as x plus 3 times x minus 1. And this is x plus 3 squared is x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now that we've factored up the GCF in our top of our first fraction, we can now do the key number on it. So this factors. Um, let's see. That way, I think. Let me see. 5x squared minus 15x. Okay, I'm lying. Um, usually, I can factor better than that. That's pretty sad. There we go. 5x squared, 15x minus 6. Okay, that's good. Then the bottom part stays the same. And this second fraction stays exactly the same. Okay, now step three. Cancel if possible. The only guideline is they're the same. One's on top, one's on the bottom. Here's these 5x minus 2's. Those cancel. 
The x plus 3 here cancels this x plus 3. This x plus 3 cancels that x plus 3. And um, am I out of colors? Um, decent colors, that is. Let's, let's pick this one. X minus 1 and X minus 1. Those cancel. Nothing's left here. Nothing, nothing. I guess we're just left with 2. And step 4 we don't have to do because all we got is 2. Okay, now if you want to see any of these factoring techniques, let me go back and show them. I'm assuming you you feel comfortable with the uh, factoring of 2 out of here. So let's go back up to 5X squared plus 13X minus 6. This right here. Well, this is a key number. We take the number at the beginning times the number at the end. So we type 5 times 6. That gives us 30. Uh, write down all products. Give us 30. We got 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. Add them. 1 plus 30 is 31. 2 plus 15 is 17. 13, 11. Subtract them. 30 minus 1 is 29, 15 minus 2 is 13, 10 minus 3 is 7, 6 minus 5 is 1. Number we're looking for is a 13. We have two 13s, but since our last um, sign is negative, that means the signs have to be different. So we want this one. So we use 2 and 15. Now we rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. Our larger number, which is a 15, has to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. Since the number I circles in the difference column, if 15 is positive, the 2 has to be negative. We'll factor out GCF for the first group. We have 5x, and that gives us x plus 3. Second group, they have a negative 2 in common, and that gives us x plus 3. Now we have x plus 3 times 5x minus 2, and that's where we got uh, this right here. Now the bottom of our... Um, first fraction. We had uh, 5x squared minus 7x plus 2. This is again the key number. Take the number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So I got 5 times 2 gives us 10. We got 1 times 10, 2 times 5. Add them. 1 plus 10 is 11, 2 plus 5 is 7. Subtract them. 10 minus 1 is 9, 5 minus 2 is 3. Number we're looking for is a 7, which is right here. So we're going to use 2 and 5. And again, we rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. Uh, larger number, which is a 5, has to be the same sign as the middle term, which is negative. Number of circles in the S column. S for same sign. So if the 5 is negative, then the 2 has to be negative. Well, group the first two terms together, group last two terms together. They have a 5x in common, and that gives us x minus 1. Last group has a negative 2 in common. Remember, if your first term is negative, you always factor out a negative. And that gives us x minus 1. So now they both have an x minus 1, so I factor that out. And that gives us 5x minus 2, which is this right here. Now the top of our second fraction, the x squared plus 2x minus 3. So we got x squared plus 2x minus 3. We said that was a PSD. We take a number at the end, which is 3, ignoring signs. And we're going to write down our three columns. Uh, all products give us 3. We got 1 times 3. Add them. 1 plus 3 is 4. Subtract them. 3 minus 1 is 2. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 2. So I'm going to use 1 and 3. Larger number, which is 3, has to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. Number of circles in the difference column, D for different signs. So if this is positive, this one has to be negative. And that's where we get this x plus 3, x minus 1. And the rest of it, I think, is pretty self-explanatory since we already did that. The factoring is the only kind of challenging part on that. And I think that's the last problem. So let me come up here and save this. That works out kind of nice because I never have time in class to actually show the factoring. I just mention what method I use.